The famous owl Flacco, who fled the Central Park Zoo, dies from traumatic impact. After the passing of a well-known owl that New Yorkers adored, tributes came in. After escaping from the Central Park Zoo last year and living freely in Manhattan, Flacco the Eurasian Eagle Owl gained immense notoriety. However, last week, he passed away due to a tragic incident. Flacco, an owl known for his singing at night and who won people over to the Upper West Side, has stopped hooting after it appears that he flew into a structure. For the hordes of devoted fans who avidly followed along and the birders who meticulously tracked the owl's daily movements, it was a heartbreaking conclusion. Last year, a vandal managed to cut a hole through Flaco's steel mesh cage and break a waist-high fence, allowing him to escape from the zoo. Thirteen years previously, he had arrived at the zoo as a fledgling. His breed may live up to 10 years in the wild and 60 years in captivity, therefore zoologists looking into his sudden demise claim he was in good physical condition and had no prior hunting experience, which helped him catch prey. According to the zoo, they are looking into whether the disease had a role in his demise and will provide an update in around two weeks. Sightings of Flacco had become into a sport, with New Yorkers watching for a glimpse of his six-foot wingspan and checkerboard black and brown feathers. The magnificent owl would spend his days perched on fire escapes, fence posts, and tree branches, and his evenings hooting from atop water towers while he hunted the many rodents that lived in the city. David Barrett who oversees the Manhattan Bird Alert account on X and kept tabs on reports of the owl's whereabouts, claimed that Flacco had been more reserved in the days preceding his passing. According to Mr. Barrett on Saturday, he had been wondering if Flacco had moved on to explore other neighborhoods, but after learning of Flacco's death, he began to assume that he had fallen ill. With news of his death comes also a plea for justice. The vandal who damaged Flaco's exhibit jeopardized the safety of the bird and is ultimately responsible for his death. We are still hopeful that the NYPD which is investigating the vandalism will ultimately make an arrest, Central Park Zoo said in a statement Friday. Fans of Flaco posted ideas for a bronze statue that would be permanent and would look out over New York City on Saturday. One person asked to bury the owl's bones in Central Park. American couple likely dead after yacht hijacked by escaped convicts in Caribbean. According to authorities, the American couple that vanished a week ago after three escaped prisoners took over their catamaran are most likely dead. According to Police Commissioner Don McKenzie, the inmates had broken out of imprisonment in the Caribbean island of Grenada on February 18 and had taken over a catamaran named Simplicity, which was carrying Kathy Brandle and Ralph Hendry the following day. The couple's boat was later seen departing Granada late at night at an unusually high pace. They were last spotted the night the convicts fled. Information suggests that while traveling between Granada and St. Vincent, they disposed of the occupants, Commissioner Mackenzie said. He claimed that the three fugitives were apprehended by St. Vincent and the Grenadines police on Wednesday and that a Grenadan team had been sent to assist in having a complete and thorough investigation of the matters at hand. Three people were being held at the South St. George Police Station on Granada's southwest tip, Ron Mitchell, 30, Trayvon Robertson, 19, and 25-year-old Abita Stanislaus. They were being charged with robbery with violence when they made their break. In addition, Mitchell is accused of indecent assault, attempted rape, and rape. St. Vincent Police released a statement in which they stated they found the ship abandoned, with objects scattered around the deck and maybe even blood on it. The accused were remanded into detention with a sentence scheduled for March 4 after they entered guilty pleas to four immigration crimes in St. Vincent's court on Monday. Although it is assumed that the couple has passed away, St. Vincent Police Superintendent Junior Simmons stated that the investigation and search for the missing persons continues. Mum left toddler alone in playpen for 10 days while she went on holiday. A woman has admitted to aggravated murder after abandoning her little daughter in a playpen at home for 10 days while she was on vacation. In June 2023, 32-year-old Crystal Candelario left 16-month-old Jalen behind as she traveled to Detroit and Puerto Rico. In exchange for Cuyahoga County prosecutors dropping two murder allegations and a felony assault charge, Ohioan Candelario entered a plea agreement in which he also admitted to endangering the welfare of children. Next month, she will be condemned to life in prison. 
When Candelario went on vacation, the investigators claimed she left Jalen alone in their Cleveland home. She discovered the kid in the playpen was not breathing when she arrived 10 days later, so she dialed 911. Shortly after arriving, emergency personnel discovered the kid was extremely dehydrated and declared her dead. The Cuyahoga County Medical Examiner's Office conducted an autopsy and found that the youngster had died from acute dehydration and malnutrition. This case is one of those truly unimaginable cases that will stick with me for many years to come. It is our job to represent the victims, and today we spoke on behalf of 16-month-old Jalen, who is no longer with us, due to the selfish decisions her mother made. This conviction today is the first step toward justice for Jalen, Michael C. O'Malley, the Cuyahoga County Prosecutor, said. A man has admitted guilt to helping in the killing of over 3,000 birds, including eagles. According to court records, a guy who is charged with aiding in the slaughter of almost 3,000 birds, including eagles, plans to enter a guilty plea. Prosecutors claim that during a years-long killing spree on the Flathead Indian Reservation in Montana and other locations, Travis John Branson and others murdered over 3,600 birds. The official records indicate that Branson, a resident of Cusick, Washington state, is probably going to admit to trafficking in wildlife as well as other offenses. By a deal reached with the prosecution, he will enter a guilty plea to lesser accusations of conspiracy, trafficking in wildlife, and two cases of illegal eagle trafficking. Buyers were told by Branson and others that he was on a killing spree in text exchanges that detectives collected, according to the indictment. It was purportedly intended to gather eagle tail feathers for potential sales. Simon Paul, a second suspect from St. Ignatius, Montana, did not show up for his initial court hearing in early January and is still at large. Paul was called by the prosecution a shooter and a shipper for Branson. Dwight Schult, Paul's attorney, opted not to respond. While his attorney refrained from commenting on the plea deal, Branson did not reply to a message. Eagle components were purportedly sold by the accused on the illicit market. It is illegal in the U.S. for anybody to kill, injure, or disturb eagles without permission, or to take any of their parts, including nests or eggs. Nonetheless, a U.S. government investigation indicates that unlawful gunshots account for a significant portion of golden eagle fatalities. Many Native American tribes greatly value their eagle and other bird feathers, which are utilized in powwows and ceremonial ceremonies. Details from a different South Dakota trafficking case last year revealed that young golden eagle feathers are highly prized by Native Americans. One of the bird's tail sets may fetch several hundred dollars on the market. A guy from Montana received a three-year prison sentence in that trafficking case. Fans and influencers are swarming Saltman Mansion after a TikTok video reveals its location. The proprietor of the rural estate featured in the movie Saltburn has called the influx of admirers to his house as strange and expressed his desire for the craze to go away. Drayton House, the ancient estate at the center of Emerald Fennel's dark satire on the ultra-wealthy, is home to 63-year-old Charles Stopford Sackville. The stately property, which is located in the Northamptonshire village of Lowick and is grade I listed, has been called one of the best-kept secrets of the English country house world in the past. However, it turns out that keeping a 200-acre, 127-room estate with turrets hidden may be challenging, particularly when it serves as the backdrop for a popular film. According to Mr. Stopford Sackville, more than 50 persons have trespassed onto the grounds of the now-famous property, shooting images and films, after leaving the public route. He said that as a result, his employees had started policing the estate. Over 3.3 million people have seen a TikTok video that explains the exact route to the property gates. Mr. Stopford Sackville said, I never envisaged the amount of interest there would be. It's quite weird. I don't take it as flattering. How would you feel if people were taking pictures outside your house? I'd prefer the interest to blow over but I can't make it blow over. Most people are fairly good, but some get a bit inquisitive, let's say. Mr. Stopford Sackville has stated that the producers paid him a substantial amount to utilize his house. In earlier interviews, production designer Susie Davies mentioned that she was granted carte blanche to alter certain rooms for the film. 
but once Tatler magazine disclosed the name and location of the rural house last year, an agreement for the performers to keep quiet about the shooting site was quickly declared void. Fennell's film examines class, power, and sex, it has been compared to a contemporary version of Brideshead Revisited. In the film, Barry Keoghan plays a freshman at Oxford University who spends the summer with his wealthy classmate Jacob Alordi after becoming enamored with him. Richard E. Grant and Rosamund Pike portray Alordi's affluent parents. A number of its most graphic sequences, including ones involving sex, death, and nudity, have gone viral on social media, increasing the movie's profile and sending the song Murder on the Dance Floor, which appears in the movie's full frontal ending scene, back into the top 10 23 years after it was first released. World's Oldest Dog, Stripped of Guinness World Record Title Bobby lost his status as the oldest dog in the world after it was revealed that he was older than he claimed to be. When Bobby was declared the world's oldest person by Guinness World Records GWR, in February of last year, he was believed to be 30 years and 268 days old. Bobby was a resident of Portugal. He passed away in October 2023, reportedly 31 years and 165 days old. Nonetheless, uncertainty over the Portuguese dog's true age prompted the GWR to open an inquiry on him last month. The National Union of Veterinarians and the Portuguese government's pet database seemed to have verified his birth, yet, the investigation was launched. Bobby was a purebred Refiro do Alentejo, a livestock guardian dog breed with a 12- to 14-year lifespan on average. Bobby beat the record set in 1939 by an Australian cow dog who passed away at the age of 29 years and 5 months when she was declared the oldest dog in the world. As of the present, the GWR claims to lack solid proof that Bobby lived that long. Microchip data from the official Portuguese database had been crucial to Bobby's evidence, according to a statement from Mark McKinley, director of records at GWR. However, it turned out that the chipping did not need confirmation of age for dogs born before 2008. With the additional veterinary statement provided as evidence for Bobby's age also citing this microchip data, we're left with no conclusive evidence which can definitively prove Bobby's date of birth. Without any conclusive evidence available to us right now, we simply can't retain Bobby as the record holder and honestly claim to maintain the high standards we set ourselves," he wrote. When contacted for comment, Mr. Costa did not respond right away. Bobby was raised in the Portuguese village of Conqueros by Lionel Costa and his family. His owner defended the title in a January email, claiming that Guinness World Records had investigated the record claim for a whole year, 